Now that we've discussed, demonstrated, analyzed, and created the different aspects of designing lights for a show, let's do this again, but in a little larger theater. We're in Midtown St. Louis at the Grand Elle Theater. Let's go inside and take a look. The Grand Elle is a farmer church that was renovated by Grand Center into a two-level, 467-seat theater in 1992. It's an absolutely beautiful space and really makes a wonderful place to produce any kind of show, but particularly classic shows like Richard III, which is currently in production by St. Louis Shakespeare. Long live the King! Let's walk through the process I went through designing lights for this production of Richard III. The first thing I did was meet with Robin Weatherall, the director of the play. Robin spent 17 years with the Royal Shakespeare Company and toured as a drummer with Joe Cocker and other musical acts in the 1970s. We met several times and talked about some of the things he saw in his concept of the show. I took notes about how Robin sometimes wanted scenes to be dark and moody, sometimes bright and deceptively cheerful. Tell me what they deserve that you can my For anyone unfamiliar with the play, Richard III is one of the theater's all-time great villains. In his no-holds-barred march to the throne, he kills his brothers, his cousins, his sister-in-law, his friends, and even his ten- and eight-year-old nephews. In addition to being truly evil inside, Richard has a withered arm, a hunchback, and a deformed leg. I wanted a sinister feeling for much of the show, and I also told Bob I wanted the entire play to have a cold, winter-like feel to it. I gave Bob a scene breakdown with what time of day I wanted each scene to take place, the location of each scene, and any preliminary ideas I had for what kind of look I saw for each of the scenes. My first job was to read the script for enjoyment. Then I would reread the script, making notes about how I felt during the second reading. Then making more specific notes about ideas that might or might not work as I read the play a third and fourth time. I visited the Grand L, looked around and got a blank ground plan from the Grand L showing lighting positions and outlets, along with the info about how many dimmers, types of instruments, and the type of controller they have. The next thing I did was attend rehearsal for the first run-through of the play and take notes about where action took place, how many people were on stage at any given time, and jot down further ideas I had about lighting the show. I made quarter-inch ground plans of the stage and set, marked when and where characters moved, and started finalizing how I would light the show. I rechecked these ideas at other run-throughs, and I finally had enough material to start my hanging plot. Since I had a rendering of the set and a costume color palette, and none of the colors were unusual, everything was good with the other designers. Bob and I decided that the stage needed to be divided up into several major areas. First, we needed three areas downstage that could be lit individually. Next, we wanted to be able to light the area of the stage where the flagstone floor was, and we needed to light it in a cool color, a white no color, blue backlight, a flame backlight. The areas far off to either side of the stage would only be used occasionally and needed to be controlled individually. All other areas would be lit by specials. For example, the opening of the play takes place with the coronation of King Edward IV and is lit with general illumination, or GI, in the flagstone area and the side areas. As everyone exited, Richard is left alone on stage to talk to the audience in what is called a soliloquy. And Bob and I wanted the stage to be dark, except for a shaft of light where Richard was speaking. We wanted to place the action so the audience knew exactly where to look, and they got the feeling that Richard was talking directly to them. What I did to accomplish the GI was to divide the stage into 11 areas on my hanging plot, with two to three lighting instruments covering each area. Areas A, B, and C were covered from the first election.